The psalmist said in his presence is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are eternal pleasures forevermore. Today we want to look at something very remarkable, as always. There came a time in the earthly walk of Jesus where the disciples, the apostles, asked him this relevant question. Lord, increase our faith. You also remember the time when James and John, through their mother, came and made a request before Jesus that he should grant that two of his sons sit one at his right and the other one by the left hand side. And Jesus' reply was instructive. Jesus said to James and John, Are you able to drink of the cup that I will drink from? Wait a minute. I thought what they asked was for promotion. I thought what they asked was for Jesus to promote them, to recognize them. But Jesus in turn asked them, Are you ready to drink of the cup that I will drink? Now, the cup Jesus was referring to was nothing like what James and John asked him. Jesus was re referring to the ex excruciating trials, the excruciating pains, the turmoil he will be going through during what is now popularly known as the Passion of the Christ passion of Christ. What is the connection? I don't get it. A man came to the Archbishop some years back, the legendary Benson Idahosa, and said to me, said to him, lay your hands on me so that I can have twice the anointing, the grace of God upon your life. And the Archbishop asked him a question in response. Are you able to carry it? He said, yes. The young man was excited. Finally, I'm going to get that which I've been looking for. The grace, the anointing upon this man who has raised nine dead persons back to life. Scores of miracles across the globe finally i'm going to just steal it away i am smart enough to catch it some of these other pastors are not smart why do they have to go through distress just grab the final product from him and the archbishop asked him to kneel down he knelt down he laid his hands on him and then he said lord for every embarrassment for every trouble for every problem i have received Give this young man double. And the young man, the young pastor, opened his eyes, realizing the result of what he had so cheerfully requested, hit the archbishop's hand from his head and said, what are you doing? I told you to bless me, not to destroy me. And the Archbishop, with smile on his face, looked at him. He said, the way to that double portion means you have to have double trouble of what I had. And the pastor said, I don't even need your anointing anymore. He walked away. Now, that is the dilemma of many Christians today. We want to look at something very remarkable. Something that gradually is becoming... Like a dinosaur, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Why did the disciples tell Jesus to increase their faith? It's the same principle. Jesus started teaching. I was talking about how troubles will come. How one particular person can begin to trouble you severally. And then Peter asked a question. They asked a question. Lord, how many times will trouble come to me through a particular person? My brother, this time around, my brother. 
not an enemy, and I forgive. Till seven times, right? Jesus said, where did you get that from? Sorry to say, the church have many till seven times that didn't come from God. We created that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have open heavens. If you read that line of story, that account, there was no point Jesus mentioned seven. Peter had calculated what he can bear and he wanted Jesus to endorse it. Today we have carved out our own Christian faith and then we want God to endorse it. Just like that young man who came to the Archbishop has carved out his own process of securing the anointing and wanted a shortcut. Let me tell you something. If there was a shortcut in the kingdom of God, Jesus wouldn't have gone to the cross. As a matter of fact, Satan offered him a shortcut. Remember during the temptation, his 40 days temptation? One of the temptations was the fact that Satan came to him and said, you don't even need to bother. Don't go to the cross. Just bow down before me here and everything will be over. Jesus rebuked him. Shortcut is cutting our life short today. Many Christians, many church folks have had their destiny cutting into pieces because of this same shortcut. Jesus looked at Peter in utter shock. Where did that come from? Jesus said, I never told you seven times, till seven times. I said till 70 times seven in one day. Now that is real problem. Who was Jesus addressing? He was addressing the persons that were going to take over from him. To whom much is given, much is expected. And then they looked at it. Instantly, Peter, who was the one who proposed the bill? <laughs> that was their own palliabit. <laughs> who proposed the bill? Instantly did the calculation, made the calculation, and discovered it was 490 times. A day only, you have to be a real wizard or witch to carry pen and paper and begin to count up to 490 in one day. Just one day's offense, one day's trouble. 490. That's trouble. That's trouble. What's Jesus saying? That offense is trouble. That offense is challenges. Are you telling me that in one day, sometimes I can have 490 challenges? And I will still come on top smiling. That's the forgiveness Jesus is talking about. That means the offense that came to you did not destroy you. Oh, is somebody with the apostle this morning? The offense that came to you did not destroy you. At the end of the day, you were standing tall. After 490 offenses in one day, many of us can't even survive two. Yet we want promotion. We want the spiritual promotion. I'm teaching on a sermon titled Believer's Exam. Believer's Exam. It will be an exercise in futility for you to wish your way into the next class or into the next level in the case of university tertiary education. You cannot progress to the next level until you write exam of the previous level where you are now if you pass, you go forward. If you don't, you carry over. In the case of high school, primary school, they don't grade you per subject. It is everything. It's your total score. So if it's, if it's bad, you repeat that class. If you score high, you move forward to the next class. It is not what you wish. If you will not take that exam, you will not progress to the next step. I want you to hear me and hear me clearly this morning. Believers exam. Every day we are confronted with exam. Do you know what we do? Some of us try to cheat. We cheat. Let me tell you the bad thing about spiritual issue. You cannot cheat successfully. Every man will give account of himself. 
I'm going to show you scriptures this morning. Do you remember the three Hebrew friends? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 30. I will now read it. Do you also recall that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were friends to Daniel? They were friends to Daniel. Now look at what happened. Daniel was the first to get the encounter, right? He interpreted the dream and he got promoted. Not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Immediately after Daniel got his promotion, they were friends, they were close, all exiled. Listen carefully. You cannot cheat in God's spiritual exams. It is not possible to cheat. As close as they were, in fact, at the point, they were even part of it. But that was Daniel's own exam. They came around, but it was Daniel's own exam. You see, God knows the one he has given exam to. It was Daniel's own exam. Do you know they all went and prayed? God gave it to Daniel. Who got the promotion? It was Daniel, because that was Daniel's exam. Listen very carefully. Believer's exam. If you won't pass, you won't go to the next class. Many of us have remained in one level for how many years? For one year now, for 10 years now, for 15 years now, for 30 years now. The thing in the Christian faith is the fact that your years does not translate to promotion. Just like in school, a very dull student can so fail and fail and the school authority will call the parents. I beg, take your picking come up for this school. That means the, the school authority, they are tired of that that student. Even in the higher institution, in the university, a student can so repeat, the school authority will write a letter and advise you to withdraw. So you see, even in the world, there is a limit to which you will fail. And the organization or the academic institution, the ivory tower, we know that this one is wasting our time, is wasting our resources, and they will ask the person to, to withdraw from the institution. Daniel had his own exam. He passed in flying colors. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were part of it. They heard when the assignment was given. It was given to Daniel, not to them. They made their possible best to be part of it. God gave the answer to Daniel. Daniel passed his test. What was that test that we are talking about? Because I'm, I'm making it look simple. It was a test that was to kill Daniel. Tell me the dream and the interpretation or all your houses destroyed and you'll be slaughtered. You think small test will give you great faith? No small test results in great faith. Small test, small faith. Great test, great faith. Small test, small promotion. Great test, great promotion. It is proportional. Immediately after that, guess what happened? In Daniel chapter 3, that I mentioned now, the test for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came. Their own exam was before them. What was it? The same king Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image. Did you hear Daniel was mentioned there? No, because that wasn't Daniel. So Daniel had written it. So I want you to listen this morning. Daniel had written Daniel was still there. Yet the decree was to everybody. Did you hear them mention Daniel? No, because Daniel would not have bowed. That wasn't for Daniel. You need to know your own exam, your own spiritual exam and key into it. Many times we become busybody in other people's spiritual exam. When the result keep coming, it goes to them and it never gets to us. I'm not saying don't assist you, at it, but you should know whether it's your own exam or not. And if it's your exam, you will know. So you will release everything within you and require every assistant to pass that exam. Because every exam means promotion. Every exam means blessing. But if you don't go through it, if you don't prepare for it well, it will result to to shame. What was supposed to bring you joy and happiness brings shame and disgrace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were face to face with their own exam. What happened? 
they refused to bow. It dawned on them that Daniel was not part of this. They didn't reach out to Daniel for help. They knew that was their exam. You see the beauty? The Bible called them friends. Friends of Daniel. They knew this was their exam. And they said, O king, in this matter, we are not careful. Why did you think the king came to them personally? Because he knew they were Daniel's friends. But guess what? Daniel has proved himself, not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the king knew, you cannot be riding on this guy's back. No, 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 no. There's no free of charge here. No FOC. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, God is a master strategist. The Father God is a master strategist. The king came to them and said, let me give you an opportunity because I know you are friends to Daniel. He has proved himself. And they said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. How many times do we little tests come and we fail? Like the one we were discussing before the church. That was a simple test. And then we failed. People failed. Never let your emotion drive you. It doesn't matter any disguise it is called. Inducement is inducement. Bribe is bribe. That's the truth. When are we going to learn? Somebody will have to repeat that again. Another scenario will present itself again in life because you have not passed that exam. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you keep going through the same stuff over and over again because you have not passed them. I, I say that again prophetically. If you keep repeating that means the same stuff over is because you have not passed it. You have been pushing it forward. You have been dodging it. And so it keeps presenting itself to give you an opportunity. And you see, unlike the human institution who get to a point where they get tired of you, the father won't get tired. He will continue to give you the exam to rewrite until you die. That's his own grace. He will continue to give you the opportunity until you die because according to Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto a man once to die after death. Judgment. Once death has come in, then it's over. No more exams. It is the declaration of what you have done that, that awaits you. They say we are not careful to answer you in this matter, O King. If God is able to save us, let him save us. If he's not going to save us, so let it be. Do we still have Christians who can speak like this? Okay, now tell yourself, what if I do the right thing and bad things still happen? Who cares? The Bible says, haven't done not to stand. Do what? Stand, therefore. It didn't say sit. It says stand. That means, irrespective of the outcome, maintain your position. Do you know why we fail our spiritual exams? It's because we put too much emotional burden on ourselves. The outcome of every encounter, every problem, who told you is supposed to be the same? It's not supposed to be the same. It's not supposed to be the same. Who told you John the Baptist didn't pray to God? That God will spare him. Yet his head was chopped off. Because that was his final test to glory. So that's why I will say towards the end of this teaching. If you lock your mind on escaping the Antichrist reign, I feel sorry for you. Because when he shows up, there was no place in the prophecy of the Old Testament that talked about the beheading of John the Baptist. But yet, that thing was part of the process. If it has been written, John the Baptist would have known. That would have been Expo. Uh-huh. So, that was hidden. It was hidden because that was his ultimate test. Look at the final test he gave him to enter. Imagine if John the Baptist now negotiated this way. And I said, okay, oh king, okay, don't worry. You know what? Uh, I will not be preaching the kind of messages that I'm preaching now. Not apostle blessing. Expect more. I will not preach the one what I'm preaching again. Now look at the deception. No, I won't preach what I'm preaching again. Herod's wife will still have killed him. Because Herod took an oath before his guest. So he would have lost finally. 
like the case that happened to some Christians in Nigeria, in Africa, the northern part of the country. This Boko Haram people accosted about 10 Christians and told them all to renounce their faith or face certain miserable and painful deaths. Nine of them instantly renounced their faith in Christ because they were smart. They thought they were smart. They said, after here, we will ask God for forgiveness because he's a merciful God. But they, fa they failed to realize that he said clearly in the book of Matthew, in the Synoptic Gospel, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. Believers exam. Today's message should shake you to your foundation. There can be no point where you, where you try to dodge or cheat in the exam because that may be your final passport outside of this world. You may never tell. That is it. And instantly they grab the only one that held on to his faith and said, I will not denounce Christ. If you want to kill me, kill me. The audacity, the, the foot soldier dragged that one and was taking him to go and kill. They had walked up to a wife, few steps, when the commander shouted, the Boko Haram commander said, stop. Uh, uh, and he was wondering, okay, maybe he wants to butcher the, the Christian by himself. Now, this other night, they were already smiling. Trust me, they would have murmured to themselves, ah, that guy no wise. He said, do you know these days, we think we are smarter than God. I think we said that last week. We think we are smarter than him now. That God is not smart enough. They will say, ah, can't that guy know wise now? Eh? Why is John always like this? God is a merciful God. Uh, he knows it's not from our heart. <laughs> but the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. That means when you fall into that trap, you are done. Because the end has already been declared. If he denies you before the Father, there's no heaven for you. And yet we toy with that kind of scripture. Don't forget John the Baptist. You have never seen this dimension that has been opened to you now about John the Baptist. That was his final test to live. If he had failed, he would still have died. He would have gone the other way. Because Herod's wife, the king had already taken an oath. So there was nothing... He could have done to reverse it because of his guest. So he says, Stop. And then he said, Do you see this one? This one that you are that refused to denounce is like us. We are ready to die for what we believe. You see all these ones? These ones are traitors. These are the kind of people we should be killing. He said, The moment they live here now, they will ask God, they will ask their Jesus to forgive them. And he said, release that one. Execute this nine. They executed the nine in the presence of that one. And he said, escort this one back to where you took him from. Of course, we will see them coming. They were run. They escorted him because they were, they were adopted from the church. They took him back to the church. Guided him to ensure none of their persons will attack him. They went back. That was the story. This was an account what happened in Nigeria, part of Africa. The nine, they were slaughtered. They failed their test. There are certain exams we write. It's not your final exam. For those nine Christians, it was their final exam. They didn't know. The exam we write in life, in institutions, schools where we attend, you know the final exam. The final exam you write as a believer, you don't know the date. As I'm talking to you now, some are already facing their final exams. And whatever decision they take will impact where they spend eternity. I want you to hear the apostle this morning. Believer's exam. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said no. If we die here, no problem. But we will not deny our God. We won't denounce our faith. They were cast into the fiery furnace. God didn't want them to die because that was not their final exam. If it was their final exam, they would have perished and gone to glory. For John, that's why I said, who told you? 
You can't always predict the outcome. Now look at the two. This, these two set of persons, did they believe in God or not? Of course, they believe in God. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was not their final exam, as tough as it was. For John the Baptist, that was his final exam. How could they have known? So for those of you banking on, you will not face the Antichrist. The Antichrist is already at work. You will be badly mistaken on. You know? Because when you come face to face with the one world government that is already activated, you will have no place to run to. Because you did, you ill prepare for the final exam. That final exam may come and you fail. And once you fall into the question of, do you denounce Christ and you denounce him, your, your, your eternity Location, destination is sealed. Because Jesus has said openly, not secretly, I will deny you before my Father. If Jesus deny, refused to acknowledge you before the Father, you are on your way to hell. Hell fire. Then to the lake of fire. There is no two ways about it. Listen, let me tell you something. In that parable of the sower, Jesus gave four categories. Only one passed it. That was their test. The rest failed the exam. Do you remember that some of them, it's not that they didn't receive the word. Though. They received the word. He said the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, right? He said they choke the word. They choke the word. And it becomes, it became unfruitful. So watch it. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter that's why, you know, I said, we all have our own spiritual exam. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 15 tells you that. It's part of the introduction. The first introduction was when the apostles asked Jesus to increase their faith. That's Luke Gospel 17 verse 5. The second introduction text is 2 Corinthians 10 15. Look at it. Not boasting of things without our major. Did you see that? Not boasting of things without our major. That is... Of other men's labors. Did you see that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could not boast of the interpretation of the dream because that was Daniel's own. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? That was Daniel's own. You keep celebrating other people's testimony. Where is your own? You keep celebrating other people's triumph, how they went through hardship, how they went through tests, how they went through problems, and then they survived it. But you have not paused to ask yourself, I've never gone through anyone successfully by myself. You are postponing the exams, but you cannot cancel the exam. You will surely write the exam. And I'm taking you somewhere today, you'll be shocked at where we are going to. You know, I, I started by saying that there is something that has become almost extinct in the church right now. Nobody wants to hear of it. Nobody wants to talk of it. That's where this message is driving us to. But having hope when your faith is increased, did you see that? That we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. How does your faith increase? Your faith can only increase by trouble. <laughs> I'll say that again. Your faith can only increase by what trouble? The scripture I gave in Luke Gospel 17 verse 5 makes it very clear. If you read the verses before there, that's why Jesus said, trouble can, 490 problems can hit you in one day. Make sure you are standing after it. Make sure you are standing after it. And then they said, hey, we know we don't have capacity for this. 490 in one day. You keep making mistakes by looking at it from the form of offense. Offense is problem. Offense is trouble. Offense is crisis. Jesus said you can receive 490. So we have grace for 490 problems in one day to, to knock them and still be standing. Oh God. Thank you for revelation. 490 in one day. They will come. They will hit you and you still be standing. We can't even handle one. And we are already compromising our faith. May we not go the way of those nine Christians. Who thought they were smarter than Jesus? Who said, listen, this is a red flag. If you deny me, no matter what you do, if you deny me before men, <laughs> I will deny you before my father. No, they knew more than Jesus. 
And that's how they lost eternity with God. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. Now look at this. No two ways about it. Let's tell ourselves the ugly truth. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. There's no pretense about it. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Something is happening already now where I walk. Why? Listen, no promotion without exam. No promotion without test. No promotion without challenges. No promotion without problems. That recognition you seek is not coming until you solve the problem. When Daniel solved the problem of the king's dream, the king recognized him. When Shadrach, Meshach, and, Ab uh, and Abednego solved the problem of the king's image, they got their recognition. Instead of you praying for God, recognize me. Let men recognize me. Sometimes we pray and we don't know the implication. Every time you are saying, God, lift me. God, increase me. God, promote me. Let men recognize me. The only thing you are asking for is God. Let problems come so I can solve them. It's very simple. You are simply saying, let problems come so I can solve them. So don't you prepare yourself before you open your mouth and pray such prayers. But we are so quick to pray without understanding the implication. Just like that young man who approached the Archbishop of Benson in Daosa. For double portion of his anointing. When he was hit with reality of what he requested, he said, I don't even need it all together. And he walked away. Yeah, he walked away. See him, see grace. Maybe he should be the one we would have been hearing of now. He jettisoned his destiny because he didn't know working out a glorious destiny contains pains and turmoil. Today we enjoy the Christian faith. Call God the answers. Jesus went through 12 hours of passion. If he didn't survive it, we wouldn't be here. I don't know who we look like. And I, I, I don't know the kind of messages that come from the pulpit. These days, messages that come from many pulpits are raising imbeciles. They are raising imbeciles. Apostle Paul looked at the prophet Agabus, plus all the church members crying around him. Don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem. You may die there. And Paul said, what is wrong with all of you? Being paraphrased. What is wrong with all of you? Is that not the goal to die for Jesus who died for me? Are you getting it? The prophet gave a prophecy. The entire church said, Paul, don't go. That would have given Paul to say, well, you, 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 you saw that I wanted to go, but they said I shouldn't uh, go. It's the entire church that said I shouldn't go. You should know when the entire congregation is wrong. You should know when the entire church, when the entire denomination is wrong and take your stand. That was one rare point where every other person in that church, in that gathering, they were all wrong, but they were all on one side. And Paul was standing alone. And Paul said, what do you mean to break my heart with this nonsense? I'm not only prepared to go to Jerusalem. I'm ready to die there for the sake of Christ. The apostles, Peter and their group, in Acts chapter 4, they were flogged and they came out rejoicing. That they passed the test. Because they told them, don't talk on this name. Don't speak on this name again. And they spoke on the name. So they flogged the hell out of them. And they came out rejoicing. Wow. We got little from what he suffered. Because the witness is passion. Today, we have jet age Christians. No, 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 no pain, no trouble. Is that not the reason why we even meet native doctors? Just for the quote, because we want easy life, we want to get money, we want to buy clothes, we want to buy something. The simple test of waiting on the Lord. No, we cannot wait on the Lord. We go to rituals. That's why we celebrate native doctors that are, the, that, that, that are putting on the clerical colors. That's why we celebrate Yahoo people. Ritualists. Because 
we don't know that it is our spiritual test we are failing so easily and so miserably. No, we can't wait. No, Christianity does not have pain. Who said that? Who said that? I will show you a scripture. Today. So that you understand. Let no man fool you. Let no man deceive you. Jesus does not give you, purchase your salvation with naira and cobra or with dollar. He wasn't licking ice cream like Nancy Pelosi during the COVID-19 outbreak in the United States while people were dying. Jesus gave you freedom through his blood. It cost him his very life. He wasn't shot by a gun. That would have been quick death. It was horrifying 12 years of brutality, 12 hours of brutality. He was so brutalized that he couldn't carry the cross. Yeah, that's the reality. He was so brutalized, his strength couldn't allow him to carry the cross. Even the soldiers knew it would be an exercise in futility to ask him to carry the cross. So they, so they grabbed Simon and say, carry the, carry the cross for him. Don't let them deceive you. You know, our Christianity now is that have testimony that you bought a car. Have testimony that you had that job. Nobody probes anymore. How did you get the, the money to buy the car? How did the car come? How did you get that promotion? No, we don't ask those salient questions anymore. People are failing their spiritual test, mortgaging their final destination with God. They are mortgaging it for sex, for ritualistic money, for corruption, for lying. For deceit, for blackmail. And we all clap our hands. If in those days, when the church was truly on fire and on course, Peter, Paul could stand his ground and say, on this subject, you all are wrong. Oh, don't even talk of us this present day. We are almost wrong all of the time now. Easy life. Now nobody talk about the means. Mm -mm -mm. It is the end now that justifies the means. Get the car. Once you come to church, you say, praise the Lord. Everybody shouts hallelujah. Nobody even asks, how did you get the car? A young man who, who doesn't go to school comes and donates 100000 to your church. There is no no job. This is they even know that these guys are Yahoo. They are, they are cheats. They are dupe. They dupe people. Everybody still shout praise the Lord for them. That's the reign of the Antichrist that is on already. Oh, you are waiting for somebody with horn? Go and read 1 Thessalonians 2 again. It is called the era of deceitfulness. What is deceit? It means you won't know that is what is happening already. If it's going to be so obvious, it will not be called the era of deceitfulness. So be waiting for one man with big horn to announce himself as the Antichrist. And deceive yourself and say, well, I would have been raptured there. You, go and read the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. The most popular phrase there is to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh. No escapee we enter heaven. We don't escape to heaven. We overcome to enter heaven. Don't forget the case of John the Baptist. That was his final exam. Thank God he passed it. He died. That of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was not their final exam. They survived it. That's why you cannot compare. That's why the Bible says they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Proverbs 24 10. If you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is small. Madam, Oga, there's no argument about it. You need to grow up. Something as simple as that? We fail? I need to motivate you to do your work. Don't do your work. When are we going to start talking like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Even if he doesn't deliver us, we will still not bow down to your image. 
Those are people who know what it means to be loyal. We are not loyal to Christ. We are not committed to him. We don't even owe him any allegiance. It is a relationship of convenience that we have with Jesus today. It's a relationship of convenience. That will get you nowhere near heaven. The life in Christ is a life of sacrifice. These days when they talk of sacrifice, the only thing that comes to people's mind, mind is money. So that's why people are, are sacrificing their souls to give to pastors now. Yahoo boys are equipping pastors' houses while they are on their way to hell. Don't forget, God is a just God. You can't deceive those young people, take their money, buy the cars and build the houses you want, and you think you will go to heaven. Don't deceive yourself. You, you can't fool God. If pastors have thought of that, they will know that their, their soul is as damned as those of those young men. God is not the author of confusion. And he can't be mocked. Did you not read that? He said God cannot be mocked. For those pastors to make heaven, why the Yahoo boys that bought cars for them to go to hell, that would be injustice. They are all going to the same place. Because the one who is collecting that money has lost his soul. It's not, he has no commitment to Christ. No allegiance to Jesus. Hear me and hear me clearly today. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. Look at it all. But in the day of adversity, consider. That's what he said. Today we don't consider. He says, ponder. Look at it. What happened? Now you know that in the day of adversity, it can as well be your examination. Don't fail. No, do you know what we do today? Now there is an automatic program answer. In the day of adversity, the enemy is after me. <laughs> do you know if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had lived today, they would have, the prayer they would have been praying is that the enemy is after us. The enemies that want to, want to send us to this furnace, Lord, kill them. Lord, kill them. These days we are so out of touch with the scriptures. So out of touch with the Holy Bible. When I see Christians behave and act, I feel sorry for them. You are a pastor. Because you walk in a certain place, therefore you can't address yourself as a pastor. As small as that, that can be your exam. As small as that, that can be your exam. You can choose to address me how you like, but I know sure how to address myself. Because that is my test. How you address me is not my exam, but how I address myself, that is my exam. As small as that, that can be your, your exam. Why? We want to blend. Or you are afraid of the system. So what if the Antichrist shows up? You can't even stand up for who you are in ordinary public service. And you want to face the Antichrist? No wonder you want to escape. Only prisoners escape. No prisoners will escape and enter heaven. There's no jailbreak. Believers exam. Are you hearing the apostle this morning? In the day of adversity, consider, God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. Did you see that? You will experience prosperity just as you will experience adversity. It is in the scripture. Don't let your pastor deceive you. What's adversity? It's challenges. Problems. Why do you keep speaking to a particular thing in your body for 10 years now, 15 years, and it has not gone? I'll show you in the scripture. God is taking you somewhere. Wait a minute. You mean God couldn't help Abraham for in, within 5 years for Sarah to conceive? It took 25 years. What was behind that? I will show you again today. The intro of the scripture that I'm going to read will first blow you off. Because the subject matter he's talking about is not the subject matter that makes you smile. Except you have deep insight into God's word. 
How do we react to problems? Huh? You know what's been happening recently? How do we react to problems? Where is your calmness in the face of storm? Where? Look at disciples. The disciples of Jesus. See how they grew. From, hey, master, don't you care we, we perish? In the boat, when the storm arose and Jesus was sleeping. Now they can look into the eyes of the powers that be in Israel. And say to them, straight on. We will rather obey God than man. We don't give a damn what you do to us. We don't give a damn what you do to us. Because he already also gave us an expo. Don't fear the ones that can kill your body, but that can kill your soul. Can't destroy your soul. Now that Jesus has already said that some of us, our body will be killed. How can we just have only one pattern, one thinking of praying? Every problem that comes, oh God, deliver me. Oh God, deliver me. Some he delivers us into. Others he delivers us from. You must look at the difference. For John the Baptist, he was delivered into. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he delivered them from. Know the difference. And it's only by working with the Spirit closely and searching of the Scriptures will you know these things. How can they know when they no longer read the Scriptures? We no longer... See, right now, if you go and carry out a survey on 100,000 Christians... 99,000 of them will tell you they know how to be a Christian. Already, they don't need the Bible. Go to church. Ensure you get money. You can be a Yahoo boy. You can be an arm robber. You can be a corrupt politician. It doesn't matter. Just get the job. Get the money. God doesn't care about how you get anything anymore. Just get it. Take it to the pastor. Put it in the offering bag. And it becomes pure money. That money perish with you. It was Peter who said it to Simon. Can we say that again? No. We... We... We hardly hear that. Oh, man of God. Oh, man of God. It was money Simon offered to Peter. And Peter said, look him in the eyes and say, your money perish with you. Man of God. You can no longer, you can't tell Yahoo boys their money perish with them. You are on your way to hell. Yeah, I'm saying it again. Whether you are a woman or you are a man of God, you are on your way to hell. Peter said, your money perish with you. Because you thought you cannot buy the grace of God. These boys are buying salvation. And they thought you are the one giving salvation. That's why they perish, you too will perish. You know why? You are usurping the position of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's not that pastor that died for them. So you see, they are foolish. You too, you are greedy. Only Jesus can give you salvation. No pastor can give you salvation. So they bring their dirty money that has led to loss of lives and pain and property and give it to the man of God who pretends to be Jesus who offers salvation. And tell them, as the money has come to church now, it has been cleansed. On whose authority? Liar, pastor. Liar, liar, pastor. You will go to hellfire. You will go to hellfire. You are on your way to hell. It's a different posture this morning. You are on your way to hell. The reason this message is coming out is so that you... Don't get confused. Don't get it twisted. You have cut out your own future destination for you. That's why the Holy Spirit is revealing it to you. And if those boys are smart, they better find Jesus who can give them salvation. That guy is an imposter. He can't offer you what he's promising you. Is that not part of the end time? He said offering the people freedom that they themselves don't have. <laughs> it's offering you freedom he, he too doesn't have it but it's offering you what he doesn't have such as I have given unto you so how can he give you what he doesn't have mm. 
James chapter 1. Let me show you the shocking scripture as I bring the sermon to a close. James chapter 1. This is a factual message. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool around. And don't pretend that you don't know the truth. This message is out already. There's no cover for you anymore. Be you a pastor, that some now have not taken on upon them the unenviable title of being called Yahoo Pastor. That even denominations like Mwinas, if Bishop Oyedipo gets to find out what some of his pastors are doing to Mwinas' reputation, he will, he will pour curses on them. I know him. Yahoo boys are not very comfortable. And they are still Yahoo boys. So you are not interested in their money, not in their soul. Oh, man of God. How did we fall to this level? Because we can't wait. No, we can't wait. Yet Abraham was still a believer in God for 25 years with a problem. For 25 years. Oh, you didn't know that was it? Abraham was serving God faithfully. Yet he had problems that lasted 25 years. You think because you are faithful, your, all your problems will disappear? If all your problems disappear, God has robbed you of the most important virtue, quality, that every believer should have. That's what I want to show you now. As I bring this sermon to a close. Your faith will not grow without this thing. This thing I want to show you now. Your faith won't grow. Your faith won't mature without this thing. God used it to mature Abraham. That when he got to a point. Abraham could have as well said. Whether you give me a child or not. Doesn't make any difference. Until we get to that point. Where we see that plus our need minus our need. It does not alter our love for Jesus. We have not struck the chord of commitment and loyalty to Jesus. Jesus died for you. Not necessarily your needs. But he said he will meet all your needs. But it was you he died for. When your needs now become the more important one to you. Not the you as a person. Then there is a problem. Then there is a problem. Why do you think Abraham laughed? Because he has made up his mind. I, I shouldn't allow that to bother me anymore. If he comes, hmm, if he doesn't come, okay. I just keep up my relationship with him. Why are we are allowing our problems to define our relationship with him. Why? Why? Because when we put our problem too much in front of us, we will fail the exam that is going to come as a result of that. Have we not seen faithful women, faithful wives, now go and get pregnant? You know why? They didn't know when they got there. That problem, they put it in front of them. It got to a point, it consumed them. And they got the inspiration those Christians in the north got. God is merciful. Even if it will end the marriage, no problem. God is merciful. I will raise the child. I will still make heaven. Don't be so sure about that. Why did I say that? Okay. For if we willfully sin against him, there remains no more sacrifice. Willfully. After that we have known the truth, there remains no more sacrifice. We all have exams. 
and we are writing our exams on daily basis. That thing that has been suggested to you to do, in your spirit you knew there is little compromise involved in this thing. Spit it out immediately. It's a little living that living at the whole lamb. Don't worry. Just he said you should sleep with him now. Just sleep with him. At least you get the job. Thereafter, you won't open your legs to him anymore. How many have slept with them and they didn't eventually get the job? How many have slept with them and they have to keep sleeping with the man to, to, to retain the job? You have to be servicing that job. How many slept with him and carried disease? How many slept, got pregnant, had complications and died? What of the one who didn't even die? Who didn't even have to continue sleeping with the man? Every time you get a paycheck, it's a paycheck of water. Every time you receive salary, you think the Almighty will forget the source of that salary? Source of the salary is not the company. It's your fornication. So in the case of that person, fornication pays you every month. Adultery now pays you every month. So the pastor who collects Yahoo boy's money is a moron. It is paying misery of the people who own that money that is paying him every month. And the Bible warned in James. He said, these people you have defrauded of their wages, of their right of their... He said, their voice cried to the God of Sabbath. Read it in the book of James. And he said he will avenge them. That's why I said those pastors, they are on their way to hell. And that's how they will infect all their children. Anyone who spend their money, their wife will use it to buy good clothes. It won't end well for any one of them. Because it's a cost money. It is now infected. James 1, quickly. We are wrapping up. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget, this was one of the persons who came out to Jesus and said, come, 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 this guy is beside himself. He's our elder brother, but I think he's mad. When salvation met him, he introduced himself as a servant of Christ. That was Jesus' half brother. When the person is saved, the person is saved, you know. All around, we see neighbors that are acting Christianity instead of living Christianity. When you are saved, you are saved. You cannot be drinking bitter water and sweet water from the same source. It's not possible. When we cheerfully display worldliness and churchianity together, that is an actor, not a believer. That is an actress, not a believer. So we must be careful these days to distinguish between those who are acting the faith from those who are living the faith. We have many actors these days. They can just do, see, how do you know an actor? They do anything they want to do. I mean, just anything. That's an actor, not a believer. When they want to dance to the devil, they dance to the devil. When they want to uh, dance for God, they dance for God. That's an actor. That's what, it's an actor that can be a bad guy in this film and be the good guy in another film, right? It's an actor who will die in this film because he's the boss, he's the bad guy, and who will survive in the other film because he's the good guy. So we have actors now. Actors in the faith. Let's learn to distinguish them. James, the servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. How did they get scattered? In case you don't understand. This word is an indictment. It's telling you clearly that it was trouble that drove them away. The Jews don't scatter. They migrate. Especially the church. 
He said that the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, when the persecution came through Paul, during the time of Paul, you remember the case of Stephen? That was how they got scattered. So this book is introducing you that it was trouble that sent them across. Problems. Ah, no, but these were the apostles now, preaching to them directly. Why didn't all pray? And why, why didn't all of them pray and say, no Lord, no power will separate us. No power will scatter us. We will remain in one place. How do we even think these days? My brethren, <laughs> are you ready to hear the next word? Are you ready to hear the next words? My brethren, look at it. Brethren is Adelphos, one born of the same womb. Born from the same womb. Adelphos, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. The word there, temptation, is trouble. Simply put, problems. Wahala, crisis. He said divers. In the Greek, it means he had different variety. <laughs> trouble with varieties and flavor. So don't think something is wrong with you because you see them pouring in. Jesus said 490 can come after you in one day. Do you know sometimes again, when it becomes too many, we start to question our own roots. What did James say? He said rejoice because that is a mark you are on the right spot. That's why they are coming after you. I preached a message some time ago and, and I said, it will be terrible and foolishness for sane people to be gossiping to mad people. Huh? So see that. So I told them, you're the, you're the worker. I said, now only the night day. Wait to say. Become them now. <laughs> if the devil doesn't have time for you, it means you are useless to him. You can't be use, useful to God when you are useless to the devil. It means you are done. <laughs> Even the devil rejected you because God has uh, rejected you first. If the devil is not after you, if you don't have any crisis, no challenge, no trouble, no problem coming your way, no problem you are solving, ah, you should cry to God though. Because even in our homes, on daily basis, don't we have challenges? So there is no person, there's no human being without challenges. So why are we taking it to another level and the wrong level? He said, count it all joy when you fall into... See the word that was used, fall, the thing, attack you. Into diverse kind of temptations. Why? Why? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith... Walks patience. This is what has become a rare, like a dinosaur in, in the Christian community. Patience. It's not lack of patience. That's why we have Yahoo people that are seated comfortably in churches today. It's not lack of patience. That is the reason why pastors are praying for Yahoo boys so that they can do more people and bring money to them. Is it not lack of patience that makes somebody to do everything to say he wants to become a politician when his only goal is to also steal the public money? He said faith works patient. So something is slightly, if I use the word higher than faith, now it, it, will, it will look like it's a contradiction of scripture. But he's saying your faith is meant to work patience in you. To bring out patience in you. What is patience? The word patience in the Greek is stability. You are not stable until you have patience. You cannot have patience until your faith has been tried. How is your faith tried? Troubles. End of the matter. If I stop here, that's the end of the sermon. So, if your faith wants to grow, bigger trial will come. That bigger trial will work out bigger patience. That means greater stability for you. It doesn't end there. What does patience turn you into? Your faith attracts trials, attracts trouble. That trouble, the enemy thought he wants to destroy your faith. No, that trouble makes help your faith to generate patience. 
when patience comes in, it's taking you somewhere. It gives you patience means stability. Eh? In not suffering long, ago, it's stability. But let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Glory to Jesus. He said, let patience have a perfect work. Look, see, patience too is not final. It's a process. There is a beginning and there is the ending. He said, let patience process itself. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes. Let patience process itself. All this is taking time. That's why that prayer you prayed 10 years ago, you are still not seeing the manifestation. Patience is taking its time. It's being processed. It's not that God didn't hear you. But God is taking you somewhere. Patience means stability. He says so that in the end you become perfect. You know what the Greek word perfect means? Matured, fully grown, established. Let me give you the interpretation. I hope you get this. Watch this. Watch this. God don't want that same trial to come twice. If you don't allow the process end, it has to come again. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He don't, thank you, Holy Spirit. He doesn't want it to come twice. Look at the process. Your faith attracts trouble. The moment faith sees trouble, Faith is excited. That's why I say, count it all joy. So next time a problem shows up, wow, opportunity. I'm going to tell you, just sit down and relax. You carry faith. It attracts trouble. And trouble thinks it wants to destroy your faith. No, it's an ambush. As the trouble comes, it hits your faith. Your faith cannot produce patience until trials come. Uh-huh. The raw material with which your faith produces patience comes from trouble. <laughs> so, who is full? No wonder the Bible says, for if the priests of this world knew, they wouldn't have crucified him. The devil is too dull when it comes to the Almighty. You will look at trouble, trials, and problems differently from today. In the precious name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is the raw material your faith needs to produce patience. What is patience? Patience is stability. Once faith produces patience, there is a beginning point of patience. There is the ending point of patience. Then patience too has its own time process. It has its own time frame. It continues to work on you. It works on you. That's why it's not one. That's why some of the problems have taken 10 years. Some have taken 2 years. Some have taken 13. Some have taken 15. In the case of Abraham, he took 25 long years to bring him up to speed. Mm -hmm. When patience finish processing itself, guess what happens? He turns you into a full-grown man. What does it mean when you say a full-grown man? It means you don't need to grow again. Listen, 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 listen. It means you don't need to grow again. But the essence of faith attracting trouble and transferring to patience so that you can grow. Do you know what that means? Once you have at, at, attained that maturity in patience, that particular trial can't come again because there's no room for you to grow. You have conquered it. So God does not want the same problem to come knocking on your door twice. But we have been so ignorant, we have been so immature, not to see that God does not want the same trouble coming over and over again. We keep truncating the process. We truncate the process from when faith attracts it. When patience is trying to have its work, we say no, like so told, told, told the priest, remove your hand from, from what again? From what they use to hear from God. He said, remove your hand. And he removed his hand. I can't wait anymore. Let's go to the war. That was one of the war that destroyed him. Whereas, it doesn't matter how the people are coming. David will sit down, take his time, 
inquire from the Lord. <laughs> and then, as far as it's concerned, if they are going to kill all of us, why we are inquiring, so be it. Those who love their life too much, they can't go far with God. And I doubt if they will make heaven. I, 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 I really, really doubt. This is one of the greatest messages that we have ever preached. Because this one borders on you. Understanding why trials come. The role of faith. What faith does. So you see now that faith is not standing alone. Faith is meant to produce patience in you. Stability. But stability when patience, that's the beginning of patience. The end of patience is that that trial will not come again. Because the Bible says you now become matured, establish a full grown man. And the devil knows that, don't bother. That guy has conquered it. Send him another one. That's why he said diverse kinds of temptation. So who is the one taking advantage? It's not the devil, it is God. He wants to mature you in every aspect. So that you will get to a point, the man will have nothing. Satan will have nothing to throw at you. We grow until we grow out of this earth into heaven. Believers exam. Let's rise up on our feet. We have spoken so much by the Holy Ghost today again. If it is secular music or film, you will be seeing 20,000 viewers, 100,000 viewers, 1 million viewers. Go and check messages. One political event will happen and you'll be hearing 11 million you you will see 11 million viewers not God's word the channel will be on YouTube and these are the kind of things that can transform their life these are the kind of message that will secure your future with God we will spend one minute and close it when the time frame is one hour plus I don't truncate my message I put my full message on YouTube and it's for free. I've never sold my message. And I don't intend to sell. But how many people are curious to receive the word of life? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are not. They are not flesh. They are spirit. They are life-giving spirit. Do you know how equip this message will equip you? Your perspective, your view of troubles and temptations in life is completely different. That thing keeps coming to you because there is something, the process has not been completed. Don't run away. Fail, stand up. Fail, stand up. Give patience a time to finish her work in you. Look at it. Faith shows up and you are you thought you were supposed to be resting. It attracts trouble. Trouble comes. Faith say, hang up. I cannot produce stability in you. Patience appears. And patience say, hold on. That's the beginning. The final part is that this particular trial will not come again. We are impatient to wait to see the end. Can we say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego today? Even if it doesn't help us, we will still not deny him. Can we laugh like Abraham and say, by this time, let's forget that story. Let's carry on with our relationship. Or can we, like Paul, look at the entire church and say, you all are wrong in this matter. So when people are looking at number for who is right or wrong, we are not smart enough. That was the entire church against Paul. Paul was right. And they were wrong. At a point, Peter was wrong. Then at a point, Paul himself was wrong. That was all led to their stoning him. Because James convinced him, James had not become this then. James convinced him, he had not grown to this point. Convinced him that he should go and carry out rituals under the Old Testament. When he had no business doing that, the moment he did that, he unleashed. But you see what Paul did? The Holy Ghost made him go through the process. That didn't happen to him again. That's a clear example. They didn't have to stone him twice again. 
but they, he got the proper stoning because the Holy Spirit didn't escape him. Are you getting the point? He didn't escape him. The first time he was let down in a basket and he escaped him. This time around, he said, okay, because we didn't, you didn't finish the process that time. That's why this thing is coming back again. This time around, you will sit down and watch. Allow patient do his final work. They stoned him. The man died. The Holy Ghost entered him. He came up again. They didn't need to stone him again the second time because he had already conquered it. Glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why in the book of Revelation, like I said a while ago, heaven is not for escapees. It's for overcomers. Don't let anyone deceive you. The church is going to face the tribulation. Because we are already in the tribulation. This is tribulation. If you don't know that, then I feel sorry for you. You are not escaping it. The church is not escaping it. The only thing you will tell me is that the church will not witness the end of the tribulation. Yeah! Because there is tribulation and there is great tribulation. The church will not escape tribulation. Go and read Matthew 24. Go and read what Jesus said there. It is very clear, black and white. When you see such troubles, when you see this, when you see that, are you going to be seeing it from heaven? What are we talking about? Don't preach message, sermon from emotion. Don't raise imbeciles. We are conquerors. We are overcomers. Let them bring it on. Believers exam. Don't fail your exam. If you fail, you will repeat it. That trouble will come again. And it will keep coming. So you understand why certain things have been repeating itself. You didn't allow patience. It's not that you fail as you fail. Oh. In some cases, you truncated the process. Patience has not completed its work. So allow patience that I love so much completes its work. I love patience. Allow patience completes its work. And then you will be established. That means no shaking. God bless you.